the CDC recently updated, and somewhat surprisingly, the recommendations on mask usage. But we shouldn't just disregard these masks just yet. There's still something we can learn from them. Essentially, a mask is a final filter. It's the last line of defense between what's in the air around you and what goes in your lungs. And that's something we should take seriously. And now that that mask may be gone, the next line of defense, practically speaking, becomes the facility manager at whatever building you happen to find yourself in. Do they understand proper ventilation protocol and air filtration? Because if they do, then that's a good line of defense to have. If they don't, it's something we should be concerned with. We'd like to speak with Alan Oakes, Camphill's branch manager in Birmingham, Alabama, about one customer he worked with recently, which was a university, and they understood ventilation very well. They understand air filtration very well. And they made some steps that would protect their faculty, students, staff members, and employees much better than before. So Alan, please take a moment to introduce us to yourself before we get started. My name's Alan Oakes. I'm the Canfield branch manager for the Birmingham, Alabama location. I've been with Canfield for about 10 years now. Um, and before coming to Canfield, I was in the industry with a uh, local commercial mechanical contractor here in Birmingham. Thank you, Alan, appreciate that. So um, I'm reading through the, uh, um, the data you provided. And as I read through it, I kind of break it down into like three categories or three basic steps this, uh, this university took. I guess the first one was that you guys went through and you discussed upgrading particle capture efficiency. The second step was you upgraded how to accomplish that without interfering or decreasing airflow, which is very important. And then the third step that they went through that you kind of guided them through was in-room air purifiers, small portable devices that can make a tremendous impact on air quality. So I thought maybe we'd go through that one step at a time. So I guess the first question is, what does particle capture efficiency mean to you? Can you, talk, can you speak about that? Sure, so when the university approached me about wanting to improve their indoor air quality for like you said, to protect the space for not only the equipment, but for employees, uh, students, faculty, and visitors, um, when you talk about improving that indoor air quality, we're talking about increasing, increasing filter efficiencies. ASHRAE gives a filter a rating with an acronym called MERV, Minimal Efficiency Reporting Value, followed by a numeric value one to 16. The higher that number, the more efficient that filter is at capturing smaller particles. Um, it's good to note that this university was already purchasing filters from Camfield. And what value that offers for us in this particular situation is that it was we were able to already understand what they were currently using and also what their air handler designs and limitations were. So as you know, by increasing filter efficiencies to improve indoor air quality, you're right, the second phase was, let's make sure we do that. And if, or, or can we do that without negatively affecting the building demand or the air handler system itself. Great, okay, so uh, that's important. And as you talk about um, increasing to, uh, to MERV 13 and ASHRAE, now ASHRAE recently came out with some recommendations through their, uh, their, uh, their epidemic task force and they, they recommended MERV 13. Now you were talking before uh, when we were speaking the other day about this and you were telling me that the, the facility people in this particular university understood MERV versus MERV A, which is a topic that comes up on here repeatedly. Can you give us your explanation of the difference between MERV and MERV A? Absolutely, Bart. And that's a great question. It's a great point. We get asked that a lot. And so a filter can have a designation with an A behind the numerical value, the one to 16 that we discussed previously. And what that A is designating is that the filter has undergone an additional testing step to say that that filter will sustain that efficiency for the life of the filter while it's in use. If a filter comes from the factory with an electrostatic charge, it will not hold its efficiency over the life of the filter. What happens is that media becomes insulated with the dust particles that get introduced to the filter over time. 
and that electrostatic charge dissipates, causing the filter to lose its, its original or stated efficiency. So that's a very important note to, 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 take, to take note of. Okay, thank you. So again, back to the, the info you gave me, we were talking before that the university had two types of units, basically air handling units. They have single stage units and then two stage units. And then so when it comes to MERV 13, and we were talking about ASHRAE a minute ago, so did ASHRAE recommend MERV 13 for these two stage units, the final filter stages, or did they recommend MERV 13A? Because you just said there's a, there's a significant difference. So which did they recommend? So you're right, Mark. They, ASHRAE didn't specifically call out MERV 13A in this new guideline. They just called out MERV 13, and that's okay for this, for this case. So you're right, this, this university did have two types of systems, one with a single stage. And in that case, they were using a MERV 8A filter to protect their equipment. And units where they had dual stage filtration, they're using a MERV 8A pre-filter followed by a MERV 11A pocket filter. So in this case, when ASHRAE made the recommendation to improve to MERV 13, if and where possible, the cases where we had dual stage filter, we were able to simply increase the efficiency of the MERV 11A pocket filter to a MERV 13A pocket filter, which is a significant increase to that system. Okay, and then on the, on the single stage systems, um, what did you do there? And I know you said they were a MERV 8A. So where did you take those single stage systems? So on the single stage systems, what we found is that if you supply a filter that's a MERV 13 and it does not have the MERV A behind it, those MERV 13 charged pleats typically drop somewhere to a MERV 9 and even as far as a MERV 8. So if, we, if we're gonna compare MERV 8 filtrate, true MERV 8 filtration, and what can we do to increase it? Increasing it to Camfield's dual nine MERV 9A filter, just simply increasing it one true MERV rating. In that one to five micron range, which is primarily a lot of the force work that a pre-filter is doing to protect that coal in the equipment, it stops 50% more particles than the previous MERV 8 filter that was in it. So that's a significant amount, one MERV level from an eight to a nine, and then a, those critical range sizes that you were talking about, one micron to five micron, going from a MERV eight to, a, to the dual nine, nine A MERV rated filter, you said you gathered 50, you captured 50% more particles, is that right? That's, that's correct, Mark. And, 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 and while we're on this topic, I think it's important to know why we chose the Camfield Dual 9 instead of the MERV 13 pleated filter in this case that does drop in efficiency over time. And, and one of the biggest reasons was we're truly achieving 9A filtration with that Camfield Dual 9 and the, the robustness and construction quality of that filter. We're able to extend the life of that filter for, for many more months than the MERV 13 pleat. We have customers that ask us all the time, when are we going to have to change and how often are we going to have to change going to the, the MERV 13 pleat with this new guideline recommendation? And simply, we don't have those answers. And, and a couple of the reasons are that there's so many different manufacturers and qualities and in, in, in different uh, links of, of, of lifespan of these MERV 13 pleats. But what I can tell you is the Camfield Dual 9 comes with a no questions asked nine month guarantee in these environments and settings. Most of our customers are getting 12 months plus with this filter. In fact, they've been in Alabama in our territories for over uh, three years now, and we haven't had to give one away due to the fact they're not meeting their guaranteed level of life cycle. Okay, so I, I see your point. So you're in the two inch tracks on those smaller single stage units, you went from an 8A to a 9A, added 50% uh, better particle capture efficiency and a much stronger filter and a longer life. Uh, and then of course, on the two stage, you went from an 11 to a 13A, which improved them uh, air quality there. Uh, so then the third thing we had talked about was air purifiers, the little small room, in-room air purifiers. So what did you and this university uh, uh, come up with there as you kind of went through and looked at the different applications and where they needed some additional filtration? What did you do there? So once we had, once we had 
accepted and, and come up with a very good solution for the air handler, current air handler design systems with the improving filter efficiencies, we, we took it a step further and found what in the some of the spaces where we couldn't truly achieve MERV 13A air and wanted to go even higher from there, we were able to implement Camfield's CDM air purifier strategically throughout campus and hallways and dorm rooms and common areas and classrooms that were able to source capture in the space the particles that we don't want recirculating throughout the building. Um, you know, it's very important to note that Canfield CDM HEPA filters each come scan, te scan tested and are certified to be a true HEPA filter. As we all know, uh, with the air purifiers, we're using a fan to move air across the filter and the filter is the most important uh, part of that equation. So having a true scan tested HEPA filter in that system doing the job that you need it to do is a very critical part of that step. Okay, thank you. So we've, so that's the three steps that you kind of went through. So a lot of times in a, in a big process like this, there's, there's some other things that you learn or you uncover. So is there anything else in your work that with this particular university that you think maybe uh, everyone should kind of hear what, what came out of your work with them? I think if it, what you should take away from this is that if this is a change you're, you're looking at making and improving your building and HVAC systems from a safety and indoor air quality standpoint, I would suggest that you, you, you get with a qualified HVAC professional that can help answer these questions to make sure that you don't cause harm to your system or your space. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And again, going back to what we said in the very beginning, I uh, was very fortunate that you've been to this university and have seen the equipment multiple times and you, you knew ahead of time what they could and couldn't do and had a good idea of how you could help and upgrade. Okay. Uh, so I see your point. It's, it's valuable to, uh, to elicit the support of someone who really knows what they're doing. And you've been in this business for quite a while, so that's helpful. Alan, thanks for your time today. Uh, I, I'm sure that that university is going to get some cleaner air and they're going to enjoy that. I uh, appreciate your time again. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, I certainly appreciate your time, Mark, and being able to share this success story.